This is a story from 1939, during the war between Poland and Germany. We see a pianist who played the piano very skillfully. His name was Spillman. He used to play the piano on the radio. One day when he was playing the piano, it starts shooting but Spillman kept playing the piano as if it was a common thing for him, but suddenly there is a loud blast that also injures his head. All the people living there come out quickly. Then a girl comes to Spillman who tells him that I like your piano very much. This girl liked him. After it, he goes to his house. There, it is shown that his family was packing all their things. They tell him that we have to get out of here quickly but Spillman says I will not go anywhere from here. If I die, I will die in my house. Then he hears on the radio that the situation has been controlled. Hearing this, Spillman's family was very happy. His family consisted of a mother, father, two sisters, and a brother, but their happiness did not last long. The German army comes there. As soon as they get there, they announce that any Jewish will not keep more than 2,000 rupees in his house and will tie a white cloth on his hand from which they will be recognized from a distance. That is, Germans had come and occupied Poland. They also write outside a few shops that Jewish and dogs are not allowed means they are forbidden to come to the shops. Now, because the Germans had come there and blown up all the radio stations, so Spillman does not even have a job but he gets the job of playing the piano in a hotel. One day he meets the same girl who told him that she likes Spillman. She offers him coffee. When they go to the hotel, it is forbidden for Jews to come there. She says, let's go to the park. Spillman tells her that it is forbidden for us to go there. They both stand there for hours and talk. Then a statement is issued that all Jewish people have to leave their homes and live in a separate place where the Jewish people coming from outside will also be kept but that place was small. Now Spillman's family ran out of money. That's why Spillman now has to sell his piano that he loved the most. They all leave their homes too. They are given a small house in a new place with only a room and a kitchen. It was difficult for six people to live there. Spillman's mom says I will sleep in the kitchen with my daughters and the three of you sleep in the room here. Here, the German army builds a wall after bringing all the Jews so that no Jews can go out of here without their permission. The Germans mistreat them. Now here, the Germans wanted to make a separate army of Jews. A German officer who knew Spillman's family comes to their house and tells Spillman's brother to join the army but he refuses. He says, no, I can't be cruel to the Jews by staying in the Germans. He now tells Spillman too, but he also refuses him. The officer says, how long will you keep selling books on the streets? Actually, Spillman and his brother used to sell books on the streets but in the context of this war, no one wanted to read books anymore. That's why their means of making money is also over but Spillman gets the job of playing the piano again but now the situation was terrible. The corpses of the Jews were lying on the streets. The Germans would kill them whenever they wanted. As the Germans came to the Jewish area, they would turn off all the lights in their house because they could kill anyone at any time. One night, the German officers go to a house where a family was sitting at a table and eating. As they arrive, they tell everyone to get up. Everyone stood up in their respect, except for one man. He was disabled and they knew he couldn't walk but still, the German officer orders him to throw him out of the window and tell his family to run away. When the four people run away, the German officers shoot them from behind. Similarly, the poor Jews were tortured here. One day, they get the news that they are sending all the Jews to the labor camp from here but they thought this news was false but it was true. Now the Germans take all the Jews from here too. They keep them in one place. The poor people were in a bad condition due to hunger and thirst. Then a child brings a toffee there which he was selling for 20 rupees. It was very expensive. Spillman's dad buys it, cuts it into six pieces with a blade, and gives each person a piece. When everyone was being taken away from here, a German officer who came to Spillman's house before who had told him to join the army, pulls Spillman out of the line. Spillman was calling out to his family. He says, don't shout, I have saved your life, you run away from here. Somehow he ran away from here. The Germans send the rest of the Jews by train. Spillman knew that whoever has gone by train would never come back. He cries a lot because he knew that he has lost his family. He goes back to the same place where his camp was but now there was no one except for the corpses. Then he goes to the place where he used to play the piano. There, he meets a man who was hiding in the closet. He calls him too. He says, we will have to hide here for a few days until everything becomes fine. They both stay there for a few days. Then after a few days, the atmosphere gets better. 
when they come out. Spillman, who was a piano artist now had become a laborer and he used to live with the remaining Jewish people in their camp. The Germans still killed the Jews whenever they wanted. One day Spillman meets a man who says many Jewish people are sent from here in the cargo train every day, but when it comes back empty. These people are slowly killing us. Spillman listens to him and says you are right. One day when Spillman was picking up the bricks and taking them up, he sees some planes flying in the sky, and as he looks up, all the bricks of that poor man fell. Seeing this, a German officer beats him a lot and then his job is changed. At the same time, the officer tells all of them that if you think that you will be saved, then this cannot happen. You will have to choose one of your companions who will go to the city and bring potatoes and bread for you. Now one of them goes to the city every day and brings food. At the same time, they also started bringing a lot of guns. In this way, they had collected a lot of weapons. Spillman tells a man there at night that I want to get out of here. He says, you will get out, but it is very difficult to stay alive outside, the Germans shoot the Jews as they see them. Spillman tells his companion that when I used to work in the city, I saw my acquaintance. He is also an artist like me and a very good person. Look, you go to the city every day to get food, you tell him about me, he will take me out of here. That man agrees and also does his job. The next day when all of them were going back after work, a German officer beats them up. He says, do you know why I am beating you up? Everyone says no he says, today is new year that's why I am celebrating by beating you up. The Germans kept torturing them for no reason. One day, Spillman leaves from there and reaches where he was supposed to reach. He had come to those people. They tell him that we can't keep you here because the Germans are watching everywhere but that man takes him to a house. This place was where his camp used to be. That man says, you stay here, my wife will come after a week and give you food and drink and he also gives him the address of a place. If there is any problem here, you go to that place but a few days later, the Jews and Germans fight here and in this fight, the Germans killed all the Jews. This fight was also fought by the people of his camp. And if Spillman was at that place, he would also be killed. But one day, a man comes to him and says, you have to leave soon because the man who had kept you here has also been caught. But Spillman still doesn't leave. He decides to stay here. He also ran out of food and drink. When he was looking for food and drink, some plates fall down. His voice is heard by the woman who lives with him. She comes to his house and says, open the door but he doesn't open it. The woman threatens him that if you don't open the door, I will call the police. Now Spillman leaves that place and reaches another place. When he goes there and opens the door, the same girl opens the door who used to like him before but everything was over because of the war and that girl was now married. He goes there and meets her husband. The girl's husband takes her to a place. He says you will stay here. This area belongs to the Germans and no one will know anything. He introduces him to a man and says he will give you food and drink and I am locking the door from outside, but that man comes after so many days who had to give him food and drink. Spillman had not eaten anything for two weeks. He was hungry for two weeks. That man comes and apologizes to him and he also says the neighboring country has attacked the Germans. Their rule will end after a few days and then everything will be fine. The man also leaves after giving him everything. Then one day, the same girl and her husband come and see that Spillman is sick. Now it was very difficult to call the doctor here. That girl gives him food and medicine and says we are leaving from here. There can be a war here at any time. Her husband somehow calls the doctor he knew, he treats Spillman. After his departure, a war broke out there where Spillman had stayed. The other enemy country had attacked the Germans. That's why Spillman runs away from there and hides in a building. He was hungry because he had not eaten anything for many days. He gets a box of food in a building and it was completely sealed. There was also an attack there that's why he takes that box and climbs up. He tries to open the food box again at night but then a German officer comes there. He comes and asks him what are you doing here? He says I was trying to open that box. The officer asks him what do you do? He says I was a pianist. The German officer takes him to the piano and asks him to play it. Spillman plays the piano very well. The officer asks him are you Jewish and hiding here? He says yes. Then for a few days, the officer often comes to give him food. One day he comes and tells that the enemy army has reached across the river and we are leaving from here and while leaving, he also gives him his coat because it was very cold there. After the officer's departure, the bombardment began. When everything stops, Spillman comes out. 
The people outside start firing at him because he was wearing the coat of a German officer. He tells them that I am not German, I am Polish, I am Jewish. They ask why are you wearing this coat? He says to save myself from the cold. They understand that he is from Poland. They leave him. On the other side, the German officer who had saved Spillman was caught. A man comes there who was telling everyone that you took my music from me hearing this. The German officer says do you know Spillman? He says yes who does not know him. He says, tell him I am in trouble because I saved his life, he know me. On the other side, Spillman had started playing the piano on the radio again. Now, the man who had met the German officer comes and tells Spillman that the officer who saved him has been caught but when Spillman goes to save him, there was no one. Poland was now free from the oppression of the Germans but in all this, Spillman lost his family and could not save the German officer who had saved his life. After this, Spillman lived for 88 years and then died on July 6, 2000. This was the true story of Spillman. Here this movie concludes.